you might remember a little while back, just like my great great uncle Archimedes, I had a eureka moment in the bathtub. It came to me that a bathtub could be made into a great worm farm, and I showed you how to do it. But what if you don't want to splash out on a secondhand bath or you don't have room for one? Never fear, your worm farm dream doesn't have to go down the plug hole. There's plenty of compact commercial worm farms you can buy, and there's a few versions of them here at the Camdenville Paddock Community Garden. But you can also make them yourself. This is an old wheelie bin that's been repurposed and is doing a great job. But the do-it-yourself worm farm option that I love is one made from these things. They're recycled polystyrene boxes that you can pick up from your local greengrocer. The beauty of the polystyrene is that it insulates the worms to help keep them moist and cool. But they still need to be in a sheltered spot out of direct sunlight. Start by punching a single hole at the bottom of one of the sides, as close to the base as possible. Make it just big enough so a piece of pipe or hose will fit tightly into it. This is what's known as a wet box. It catches the leachate which drips out of the worm farm that's sitting above it, directing all the valuable liquid into a bucket later on. And the other valuable thing is that that pipe acts like an air funnel and helps bring more air into the worm farm. I'm punching a few holes into the base of a second box. This is called the home box. Now, to prevent the worms from falling through the holes, we need to line this box. I'm using fly screen mesh, but you could use shade cloth or geotextile. Next comes what's called the bedding. It's a mixture of organic materials. I'm using shredded newspaper and aged compost. Or you could use manure. Fill the box until it's around a quarter full. You need to dampen the bedding. Make it moist, but not wet. Put the home box on top of the wet box. Now your worm farm is ready for your worms. Did you know that there's around 650 species of worms native to Australia? Most of the worms in your garden, though, are introduced species from overseas. And although you might have some beauties, they're not great for worm farms because they tend to want to leave to get back to the soil and they're slow to multiply. The types of worms that do well in worm farms are tigers, reds and blues. And you'll need about a thousand to get you started. You can get them from nurseries, order them online, or you might be lucky enough to get them from someone who already has a worm farm. Oh, that is a worm brulee. The worms go into the top box and soon enough, they'll start to wriggle down into the bedding. Keep them covered with a bit of hessian or a few sheets of newspaper and put the lid on to maintain even temperature and moisture levels. Let the worms settle in for a couple of days, then add some food. Just a little bit to start with. Kitchen scraps are perfect. You'll find a list of things you can feed your worms on our website. And they need grit to help digest their food. Give them half a cup of crushed eggshells every month or just sprinkle on a little garden soil. The biggest mistake new worm farmers make is overfeeding. General rule of thumb, if you put the food out and it's not gone within a week or so, there's too much. This is what's going to happen. Vinegar flies everywhere. And of course, conversely, if you don't put enough food out, well, it'll be gone in a few days, so you just need to adjust your volumes a little bit. Keep an eye on the moisture of your bedding. It should be moist, but not soaking. This one, for example, look at it. I squeeze it, no drops are coming out. It's perfect. If there were drops coming out, the way you can correct it is add some shredded paper, some dried grass, or some shredded dried leaves. A sure sign that it's too dry is that you'll have ants in your bin. The simplest way to correct that, fill up your watering can, 
and give it a good soaking. Eventually, your top box will fill up with worm castings. There's lots of different techniques used in harvesting them, but my method is to first scrape the top layer off, which has eggs and small worms in it, and put that aside. And then, working in bright sunlight, which forces the worms to head downwards, I slowly scrape away the castings the worms have left behind, and this becomes my harvest. Alternatively, you could use a third box like this worm farm has. So what you do is just put that one on top, add some bedding, and over the space of a couple of days, the worms will migrate up. Once they've moved up here and they're dining in the new dining room and bedroom, you can head down here and harvest these castings as you need. It's pretty straightforward. And you can do exactly the same thing with the polystyrene system, simply by putting some holes into a third box. You'll be harvesting worm castings before you know it. They're chock full of nutrition and pretty much the best soil conditioner you'll find. And then there's the leachate. It's a potent liquid fertiliser, so dilute it down to the colour of wheat tea before using it. Once you've got your worm farm pumping, your garden will be pumping too.